So let's go. I will present you the curation of standards, what's involved to curate standards in fair sharing. Uh, it may repeat some message from Pete's talk, but with another point of view, so I think it will be useful anyway. So, and please don't hesitate. If you have any question during the presentation, it's okay. I, I can stop and answer to your question. So, uh, let's go to the beginning. Why do we need to formalize data? In fact, it is crucial for community to share the data, to share the same vocabulary, to first understand each other. Here you have an example, two people talking together. The one says, what are you talking about? And the second answer, the stomodeum. And the one replies, ah, the neurohypothesis primordium. So here we have two expressions with the same meaning, but which one is a good one and which one will be understood and validated by the community. So, to formalize data is also important to convert what we understand in computer objects. So here, if we take the previous example, only the neurohypothesis primordium will be understood by the machine, except if somewhere we can specify that both are synonyms. And the first point is that um, formalized data could, could also allow to share this object between different systems, different databases. So, why standard is a solution? Standard allows the data, meaning the description of the entities, for example, the gene, with their targets and their measures, like intensity, location. So standard allows the data to be shared, accompanied by a sufficient number of experimental data, the study materials, technology and measurement style, etc., and metadata, for example, authors, publication, experiment date, etc. So, <clears throat> there are different types of data. Four types of main data allow representation, description, and reporting experimental data. The first one is the minimal information basic checklist, as we call reporting guidelines in fair sharing. This standard outlines the necessary and sufficient information vital for contextualizing and understanding a digital object. Here there is an example of a reporting guideline. It's a minimal checklist necessary to describe information about an in-situ hybridization experiment. So here to describe the experiment, you need first to provide information about the experimental design, meaning the author of the experiment, the experiment date, contact information, and so on. You need also to provide what biomaterial were used, what treatment were applied to the biomaterial. You must provide about information about the reported gene, the staining of the reported gene, imaging data, and imaging char characterization. Second type of standard is semantics, what we call ontology and terminology artifact in fair sharing. This type of standards allow to range from dictionaries to ontology, providing definition and unambiguous identification for concepts and objects. Here you have an example of, um, of, the, of a term, which is hair science from the fair share subject ontology. And you see that for this particular term, you have one definition, you have comments, you have relation between other uh, terms and you have also synonyms. Um, you, you, you have a lot of, um, uh, of features to, to, to define your, your term. And the third step of standard is syntax, what we call model and format in fair sharing. 
this standard defines the structure and relationship, relationship sorry, of information for a conceptual model and include transmission formats to facilitate the exchange of data between different systems. So here I just put an example of an XML file allowing the import and export of the data fitting with the reporting guideline I just uh, present uh, previously concerning the ICTU, um, in situ hybridization experiment. And finally, the latest standard is the identifier schema. These are formal system for resource and other digital objects that allow their unique and unambiguous ident identification. So the best example for that is that is the the digital object identifier, the DIOE system, that, that you should know. Okay, so the next question is why do we need to manually curate uh, resources? What is the benefits? The first answer is that manual annotation, meaning to describe data and assign tags, will allow the user to search, filter, browse and sort standards. So as you can uh, see previously, you can search thanks to, um, thanks to uh, different tags, thanks to subject, thanks to organization, thanks to countries, taxonomy and so on. You can also sort your data thanks to the different tags. Uh, so yes, this is one of the benefits of uh, manual curation. So annotation means assign tags to a record, tags from knowledge, domain and subject here, uh, are defined in fair sharing subject ontology and fair domain ontology, fair sharing domain ontology, sorry. This switch ontology are the results of the work of the fair sharing team who import, check, and create relevant terms to best describe the data. This expertise can only be done by manual creation. Uh, maybe I'll see. Um, do the, I just read the question. Do the four types of standards exist separately? Can you have a standard that borrow from the different types? <laughs> How can we contribute? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ali answers to the first question. Yes, they are separate. Uh, and how can we contribute to how and how? Maybe this we can discuss later with Pete and Susanna and Alison, because we have some tool to to, uh, to curate the ontology, but I don't know. Um, it's better maybe to speak to, to this part after. Yep. I'll pop the, the URLs in, but yes, I agree. We can, we can talk about it later when it's an appropriate time. I'll learn from all of you. Okay. Um, okay, so let's continue. Uh, tuk, tuk, tuk. Slide, next slide is yes. Uh, yes, another part of manual annotation is to cross-link records. Linking standard to standard and the databases will make the resource more visible and more used. If your standard is implemented by a repository, these two records will be interlinked. Thus, if someone is interested in that repository, they will see that your standard is used by that resource. So here you have an example of with this, with this database, this geo database, that is using two different types of standards that are also interlinks. So if someone is looking for gene expression guide, guidelines, he will find the Miami uh, reporting guidelines and the format used to import, export data uh, from the Miami guidelines. Um, uh, standard. Uh, yes, so furthermore, fair sharing collaborates with many infrastructure resources to cross link each record to other registries as well as within major fair driven global initiatives. 
research in infrastructure programs, many of which are generic and cross-disciplinary. Um, so yes, manual curation will, will allow also accuracy. The most accurate and comprehensive standard is, the more change it will have of being associated with other relevant databases and standards, which in turn will lead to more potential new facts. Okay. Um, so the next question is, what is the benefit of community curation? The first point, uh, as uh, Pete explained, as Pete already explained, is to guide users in the selection of the most appropriate standard according to the status of the resource. Is the, if, is the resource ready, in development, uncertain, or deprecated? Thanks to the application domain annotation and thanks to the interlinks. So here you have an example. Uh, my founder's data sharing policy recommends the use of established standards, but which ones are widely endorsed and applicable to my toxic toxicological and clinical data? So for that, I can query fair sharing and choose a standard according to my domain, the status of the standard and the popularity of the standard, meaning the cross-link between the resources. Just check, uh, yes. Community curation means also to work with developers and maintainers, and maintainers sorry, of the resource to foster collaboration and promote harmonization. Producers of standards are, are able to claim the record for the resources they maintain or have developed. And this functionality allows them to gain personal recognition and ensures that the description is accurate and up to date. And here you have two illustrations. I'm a curator and I want to be sure that I'm using the latest version of the terminology, allowing me to annotate, to annotate cell-based assess, or I'm a data manager and I want to replace a deprecated format and I want to know how this work is done. Community curation also means to interact with journal and publishers. <coughs> Fair sharing is positioned to highlight to journal or publisher which terminology, artifact, and model and format, along with other standards, each database and repository implements. This, along with community indicator of use and maturity, as well as emerging, emerging global certifications, is essential to inform the selection or recommendation of relevant databases and repositories. So we can imagine that the journal edit editors ask us what are the major standards they should recommend to their authors. So another community curation effort, uh, as uh, Nicola uh, said just in the, in the chat, uh, yes, the, 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 the community creation effort is the development of these two ontologies. These ontologies are defined by the fair sharing team, but in collaboration with experts in the corresponding domain, allowing a better understanding of the field under analysis. Um, so, this allows standards to be, to, to be fair, to be findable by providing functionalities to register, claim, maintain, and search and discover them. Accessible by identifying their level of openness and or license type. Interoperable as much as possible by highlighting which repositories implement the same standard structure and exchange data, and reusable by knowing the coverage of standard and its level of endorsement by a number of repositories that should encourage its use or extension in neighboring domains rather than reinvention. Um, Yes, so now I want to present key steps 
um, uh, to, to create your standard and fair sharing. So basically it's just uh, a few screenshots to, to give you an overview of the procedure and show you that it is quite easy. Uh, and after I, I can give you also a live uh, demonstration. If we have time, it's, uh, yes, I think we have time. So first, uh, to enter your, your standard in, the, in fair sharing, you just have to choose the add claim content and select add standard button. And the first part will be, will concern here general information like uh, contact information, creation year, year of creation, sorry, the home page of your resource, the description, the status of your resource, um, the name of your resource. And here you have also to, to choose the, the type of standards I presented before, if it is um, a format, a terminology artifact, um, guidelines and um, identif identifier scheme. Um, yes, after you have to, to, to provide the country that develops uh, the resource and uh, the taxonomy, uh, the species studied um, in the resources. So sometimes it will not be relevant because uh, you, you have a general subject in life, life science, so you cannot specify a species, so you can just put all species. And by the contrary, sometimes it's not relevant at all that there is a species because you, you talk about uh, astronomy or this kind of a domain, so you just uh, fill in the field with not applicable. And after, so this is um, an important part. You have also to describe your resource as best as you can with tag defined in the domain and subject ontology. So as you type, you will be presented a, the, a list of matching value with the corresponding definition and synonyms, and you will just have to choose the more appropriate. <laughs> if the tag you want to provide doesn't exist, you can add it as user defined tag here. Uh, so as I said before, this section will allow your data being findable and visible. So you have to be as specific as possible. Uh, the next section is about cross-link between resources. So uh, thanks to the autocomplete function, you can just type the database or resources you want to link and uh, you will have to choose uh, the good one. If the, the resource doesn't exist, you will have to contact the support that we can create the resource and link to the standard you, you already created. Um, yes, then you have to uh, provide information about associated organization. Um, each organization involved in the project as a collaborator, founder, or maintainer of, of your resource. And uh, same thanks to the autocomplete function, you just type the beginning of um, of the the association, the organization, sorry, and you will have the, the the organization that will appear. And if not, if the organization is not appear, you just have to. To, to type as free text. Uh, and then if the project was or is funded by grant, you can also fill in this section. Maybe I will just have a look on the question, so we... Um, alors, I, yes, I, I will just show you an example. It is possible to create a trail standard. Yes, maybe it will be easier. <clears throat> okay, so maybe I will go uh, quickly on this demonstration and go maybe better to a live demonstration. It will maybe more useful. 
Okay. Just to finish, you have also free author bar associated tools. Um, does the, the, the resource have uh, relevant tools? So you just have, I want also to, to mention the tools that are linked to, to the resource. Does the, the resource has relevant publication, related publication, EPA, uh, data process, so meaning the, the data access, uh, how you can search, browse and download the data, uh, are the data curated, is there any real, uh, versioning and release? Uh, the license of uh, the data you you can uh, you want to share, and the support section, which, which is uh, uh, help, fact, um, contact, um, online documentation, uh, training, tutorial, and so on. Okay, so I will show you in live. Maybe it's also after. Yes, of course, you save. Uh, once you, you have saved your data, you will have a link, you, ha you have a successful message. So you are hap you're happy. You can access to the, the record you created here and you can also edit again the, the record and change and save. Okay, so just show you. Uh, up. Okay, so let's try with someone I should enter, but I didn't. So this could be a good example. So I want to add my standard. So I click on add standard. Okay, so here I have to choose which type of standard it is. So for me, it will be an ontology. First, I, sh I should mention the name of the standard. So it was about Botrylus Anatomical and Development Ontology. Uh, I work, I work also in developmental biology, that's why I have so many examples with, with that. Um, so yes, uh, you can uh, provide the abbreviation. Uh, you, you can also make a link to Bioportal. I don't know if you know this portal, but uh, in life science, we, we used um, this portal. So uh, I know that uh, the ontology is also stored in Bioportal, so the, I could, I can make the link with Bioportal. I can also make the link with Obofundry, um, but not in this case because my ontology is not in Obofundry. Uh, should have a, add a description. So here I have a small description. Up. So explaining what is about the ontology. So the ontology describes the anatomy and development of this species and based on anatomical blastogenesis and regeneration of this organism. Okay, the link. Um, so this ontology is available on this database. We create this one in 2013, yes. Uh, okay, so here you have to check if uh, the entry is registered in the database. So for my standard, it is not. So I will left. I will leave. Sorry, the field empty. So the contact name is me. Mail. Orchid, uh, I don't remember, but yes, we have an orchid, but okay, let's let's it empty for the moment. Uh, the country, so you first begin to enter the, the country and you choose the good one. Taxonomy, 
it's about Botrylus. So I say, if it is not applicable, you just have to choose all, uh, sorry, not applicable. Okay, if it is not relevant to mention a species. So me, it's Botrylus. Botrylus, yes. Okay, here I will choose a different tags to describe uh, my, uh, my standard. So it is about life science. Okay, life science. I can check the definition. The definition fit to my standard. Uh, it is about developmental biology. Developmental biology, yes. It is about anatomy because I described the anatomy of this species. Uh, life cycle, life, uh, sorry, life cycle. This one and this one are okay. Um, what else? Two, two, two. It's about morphogenesis also. Morphogenesis. Morpho ah, there is no morphogenesis. Morphogenesis. Okay, so this one doesn't exist, but I want it. So I just. And this will be hard as user defined tag. Okay. And also, I would like add a sexual reproduction. Okay, um, so next, I want to make cross-link uh, which database use this standard. So I know this one, okay, this is a good one. I enter it. Um, related standard, yes, it is using the OBO format, okay. What are the associated organization? I know that some one in France. Okay. They are maintaining. Yes. Okay. And you can add as uh, much as you want. Uh, concerning the grant. Okay. There is no grant for this standard, but you can add grant number with the URL of the grant, the organization and URL of the organization. Uh, then associated tools for this ontology, they are not, but just to show you, you if it exists, you had the tool name, the version of the tool and the URL. Uh, publication, yes, there is one publication. It is, uh, yes, I just need the PAMED ID. And normally, I found I have a very low internet connection. Yes, okay, perfect. Uh, so here you have a question that cite this record using this publication. So yes, I want. Uh, this is the API uh, services, web services. So same from tools, you can choose the type of access point, the description and the URL. Let me check. Uh, okay. Uh, so next data processes. Okay. So here I just want to say that you can browse the ontology on MC database. So we'll check the link. So this ontology is this one. So, yes, I can browse this ontology. And, sorry, browse. And I know that data 
are created. Uh, data curation. Okay. Uh, concerning the listens, yes, you see this one. So this is the same. You can choose your listens and the support. Uh, for this ontology, there is not a lot, there is just another email. Uh, tech, email. Okay, here you can to describe the, the type of support, but you, you, you will not put email twice, so you just put none, because there is no significant description. And um, yes, I have also a Twitter account. Okay, this is uh, a section for life science, so it may not interest you. Uh, if you type um, the, the name of the resource, you, you can access to data that is present on test Elixir database, but uh, not sure this will um, fit to your needs. And you save your entries. And here, I can check everything. This is okay. The link, there is no tool, no schema. Uh, I can browse. There is data curation, publication. Um, this is maintained by CNRS. Okay, and if I want to change something, I just edit and make modification and save again. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, we'll check if you have any question. Uh, my connection. Thanks. Um, thanks, Delphine. That was really 